Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Passion of Ice podcast with yours truly, Ice the Moore. I'm checking in with you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, you could be listening to almost anything in the world right now, but you decided to want to listen to me, so I'm most appreciative of that. Um, we got a lot to talk about today, um, so just just hold on to your hats because we got a lot to get into. You know, the title of today's episode is from Black History Month to Lack History Month. Uh, we'll get into that here later on into the show, but wanted to get into a couple of other things before we start. I want to start off by saying um, all the, the positive feedback that I've heard um, up to this point. Uh, I, I'm grateful. Uh, thank you for, you know, all the feedback, uh, positive and not so positive. Uh, it, it all kind of helps to build the platform. You got to start somewhere. So uh, if you have been sharing this, you know, you're trying to put other people on, please continue to do so and urge those folks to do the same. Uh, this is the only way that this platform is going to get any bigger and grow is by word of mouth. That's the best advertising, I think. So thank you all for doing that. And if you have ideas for the show or if you want to drop me a line, if you got some feedback, positive or negative, um, there's a couple ways you can get at me. First, you can email. Uh, my email is ice the more at gmail.com. That is I C E T H E M O O R. Um, you can also follow me on IG, Ice the Moor. Also, Twitter, same thing, Ice the Moor. Uh, so, this streaming, you know, streaming wise, it, there's a few platforms that I'm on now at this point. First and foremost, iTunes. Just look up the Passion of Ice. You know, rate, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, same with YouTube. YouTube channel is Ice the Moor as well. Uh, also on Google Podcasts. I'm also on Spotify. Uh, check out TuneIn as well. And if there are any other platforms you think that can, you know, benefit from me putting this out on, just, you know, let me know. And I'll explore those options too in the future. So here on Passion of Ice, I like to bring forth what I call, or I like to call, melanated edutainment. All right, so... That's a mixture of educational and entertaining content. And hopefully sometimes it'll be both ed educational and entertaining at the same time. I like to bring that in balance. Uh, so my passion comes from you know, hip hop culture. I'd like to always put it. So if you look at the art cover, you see, you know, there's a cassette tape. You're like, what the hell is a cassette tape got to do with anything? That's where Ice the Moor's passion stemmed from. That's where it originated. So I always like to bring my passion of talking about hip hop culture, especially, but music and mix it along with other passions I have. Talking about, you know, what people would classify as conscious or, you know, higher thought. You know, things of that nature, being woke, which I, I really don't like those terms, but I use it to just let you know what I'm trying to say. So I try to mesh those two things together uh, to show you that as far as Ice and Moore is concerned, that I'm concerned, it's two sides. It's two sides of the same coin. So at the at the end of the day, it's all passion. I'm all passionate about this. I would love to talk about this forever and ever, but. Your attention spans and my voice won't allow for that. So, so up first, we got the fifth degree. This is my segment where I like to take it back as far as rap history, you know, specifically and go over albums that may have held up, you know, the test of time to see, you know, how far we've come and how far time flies just in general. So this week I have a few albums to highlight first uh, five years ago first up we got 
Schoolboy Q's major label debut album entitled Oxymoron was released February 25th, 2014. If you're not aware of who Schoolboy Q is, I'm pretty sure most of you, the younger folks at least, listening know who he is. Uh, He's a rap artist signed to Top Dog Entertainment, more commonly known as TDE, uh, home of uh, Kendrick Lamar, SZA, a lot of other talented artists I like over there, Sir, uh, Absol, J-Rock. So five years ago, that dropped. And also, we have two more iconic albums to talk about that released uh, 20 years ago. Both of these albums dropped on the same day, uh, February 23rd, 1999. First album I'm going to talk about real quick is The Roots Grammy Award winning album entitled Things Fall Apart. If you're not familiar with that album, please go check it out. Uh, Many consider it to be a classic rap album, myself included. The Grammy nod, I believe, went to the song You Got Me, which was featuring Erica Badu. But here's an interesting tidbit. That's not the original song. The original song was actually featuring a then unknown Jill Scott. But that was more of a, a record label pull saying nobody knows who this Jill Scott person is. Let's let's get somebody that people know. You know, by that time, late 90s. You know, people knew who Erica Badu was. She was pretty, pretty out there. She was pretty popular, right? So let's just get her on the hook. We can get this radio play. And I mean, eventually it did. So, you know, props to them. Uh, But there is an original version with Jill Scott. Uh, You could probably even find it on YouTube. I actually prefer that version better myself, but just a little tidbit for you. All right. The other important album that dropped on the very same day is Eminem's The Slim Shady LP. So this is his actual major label debut. This isn't his first album. Uh, His first album was entitled Infinite, which came out in, I believe, 1996. And then he also dropped uh, the following year, 1997, the Slim Shady EP, which featured a lot of, not a lot, but several of the, the tracks that were placed on the Slim Shady LP. So this was the first time a credible white rapper had the opportunity to reach out to the masses and not be considered corny uh, since Vanilla Ice. Right? There's been f- few and far between there, you know, over the years up until that point. But that was the first time you heard it, an actual white rapper that could actually rap. So an interesting note about this album, uh, the lead single, My Name Is, actually has three versions. Most people don't know this. So you have the radio version that's, you know, kind of pushed out there to the MTVs and the radio stations of the world. Uh, You had the version that made the album, but there's also an uncensored version, an uncut version that they had to switch up a couple of lyrics, uh, mostly aimed at kind of LGBT, uh, the commu- that community. Uh, so in the second verse, he says, my English teacher wanted to have sex in junior high. The only problem was my English teacher was a guy, right? So kind of a knock on the, the LGBT community. And they weren't having that shit even back then, 20 years ago. And then he goes on to say he chased him around with a stapler and stapled his nuts to a stack of papers. Uh, And then a couple of bars later, he says, extraterrestrial, killing pedestrians, raping lesbians. So, you know, good and goddamn well, they weren't going to have this shit put out on albums. I don't care if you're a white artist, you know, doing rap music. They were not going to have that shit. So. That's why you've probably never heard this version before, but like I said, you can find it on YouTube somewhere. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that was another song that they edited out too. Uh, the the next single, I think, or one of the singles with Dr. Dre, Guilty Conscience. There was a version that they said something. He M said something about rape. He said something, some real foul type shit that they 
toned down for the album version but I, I can't remember what, what was said but just thinking back 20 years ago he used to say some some foul like I can't even listen to some of this shit now you know being a man of a certain age it's just like alright I, I guess you were doing it you know I, I get it you were doing it for shot value you were trying to be different you know you did you did that but now you know the older you get you can't be riding around talking about you know raping lesbians and shit like that I, I don't want to hear that at this point in my life so uh, there you have it fifth degree all right there you have it so let's get into some of the new music that dropped this week there was a few projects of note that stood out to me that i gave a couple of spins this past friday uh the first project that i was kind of you know pleasantly surprised that i enjoyed this one the most uh this was a mixtape or and I've mentioned this before you don't know what a project is it's just better call it a project you don't know if it's a mixtape, an album, an EP so Kalani singer Kalani, she dropped a a project entitled While We Wait and I'm, I'm thinking they categorize this one as a mixtape because I guess her her second or you know her follow up to her major label debut is on the way uh, she's currently pregnant so I think they wanted when I say they the the record label wanted her to get some music out so the uh, project is entitled while we wait so I'm assuming you know while the world waits for her to deliver her healthy child you know we're, we're hopes that things go well for her but this project was pretty good uh, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, I, I kind of enjoy her music, I'm not, I don't want to say the biggest fan, but, you know, I I, I do enjoy a, a quite a bit of it, so, uh, this one really took me by surprise, so, I urge everyone, if you're into R&B, especially the, the new stuff, uh, give it a spin, a couple features on there, uh, Music Soul Child, what, what, what's going on with him, he's like, he's just popping up on everything nowadays. Uh, he's on the uh, Smith & Wesson album. That's another album that I'm checking for that dropped this Friday. Uh, you know, a, a favorite group of mine, especially back in the 90s. So a lot of young folks probably aren't familiar with them, but uh, that was an album that I gave a spin, a couple spins, and it was pretty good. You know, I'll, I'll listen to it again to see how I feel about it. And the last album that was on my radar on my my listening rotation this weekend um, is Offset from the group Migos. He finally dropped his solo debut after much, you know, all I don't even know what to, to call whatever was happening between him and his spouse. You know, I, I don't want to get into anybody's household, and I've already talked about how I think, you know, a lot of that was a rollout, but he dropped his debut solo entitled Father of Four uh, interesting artwork I don't think anybody expected the artwork that was you know kind of given to us so he had all four of his children I didn't even know he had four kids uh, he had all four of them uh, kind of he was sitting on this throne there was this I got an ancient Egyptian uh, vibe from looking at the artwork artwork you know it's pretty dope I, I it was unexpected uh, music wise I can't say that I'm the biggest Migos fan out there uh, I don't really listen to too much of their music uh, you know from what I heard it, it, it a lot of stuff sounds the same uh, so with him he's kind of considered the to my understanding you know I guess who you would say the most lyrical out of the bunch so uh, it, it was okay. There was a couple songs I was kind of feeling. Um, but we'll see. I may not listen to that too much, but, you know, if that's your flavor, you know, check it out. All right. So let's let's get into today's topic now that we've got all the, the fun stuff out the way. Like I told you in the beginning, today's episode is entitled From Black History Month to Lack History Month. And 
this kind of stems from my observation that the whole idea of Black History Month, it seems like it's starting to slowly disappear because it seems like in the month of February, you have so many different activities going on, right? You have the Super Bowl. You have all these major events, right? Like I said, the Super Bowl. You've got NBA All-Star Weekend. You've got the Grammys. You've got the Oscars. Mind you, February is only 28 days long. You've got all these different major events happening in the same month. And you mean to tell me you can't push some of this shit to March or April? You know, there's not a whole lot going on, you know, in those months. But for some reason, they want to slowly shift the idea of recognizing the rich history of black people in this country. It, and not even just in this country, but just for starters, just in this country. Because let's let's face it. We we won't have to tell the truth on this one. Black history is world history. Black history predates the history of any other race of people on this planet. So to me, there's a, a slow shift of let's not talk about this as much as, you know, we used to in the past. And don't get me wrong. What they used to push when I say they, I want to make sure I'm clear about what I'm saying the dominant society you know I remember my younger years anytime it was black history it'd be the same four or five people I'd hear about every single February and it would get to the point where I didn't want to know anything about black history I didn't even because I'm like oh I heard the same shit before blah 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 but once I actually start learning the actual untold history the history that wasn't whitewashed, then I got more interested in it. So I urge, especially the young folks, you know, shout out to the young folks listening. Um, I urge you to, if you want to really know your true history, you're going to have to seek it out on your own. It's not going to fall in your lap. So to our credit, nowadays, we have access to information, you know, at our fingertips. We walk around with smartphones. Those are basically mini computers. It can connect you to the world. So if you're going to want to learn, you're going to have to do it on your own, unfortunately. And it really is sad to say that. But if you don't, you're going to fall into the the lull of not wanting to hear about yourself. And you're going to end up falling for the, the con that's being run on us. Even, you know, in recent years, you you hear the term slavery or enslaved Africans. That narrative is starting to get changed. They were um, workers that came over here. No, (laughs) they weren't workers. They were enslaved people. They weren't even slaves. They were enslaved people. Okay, so there's a big, big difference between that and you know oh they just came over here to work no not at it okay and that's one thing the other thing that they try to do that i'm noticing in recent months especially you know in the past couple of years to a couple months there's this shift on let's call it indentured servitude they were indentured servants people there's a big difference between indentured servitude and antebellum slavery indentured servitude has nothing to do with being stripped of your humanity indentured servitude just means you are indebted you have to work off a debt for somebody they treat you humanely you know you don't get stripped down you know as as a person you, you're treated humanely until your debt's paid off. And then you go about your business and live your life. So don't fall for that, Con. When you hear that, don't fall for that. That's that's just changing the narrative. You know, that goes along with the, the textbooks getting changed as well. And I've seen that. I've seen the textbooks say 
workers came from Africa. And if you don't know your true history as a black person, you know, as generations go on and on, this goes unchecked. You know what they what is the saying? A, a lie unchallenged becomes truth. So if these lies persist as if they have been for hundreds and really thousands of years, it's going to get changed to, you know, enslaved Africans were just workers. You're not even going to hear the word slave mentioned anywhere because we're not being you know, responsible enough to hold on to our history and cherish it. You know, other groups cherish their history. And it just seems like the, there's this subtle shift towards us not holding on to that. So we have to be very careful to not fall for that con. OK, so if you need a, 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 a conscious, you know, for black folk, if you need a, a, a conscious starter kit, if you will, um, there, there's a couple of there's a couple of documentaries that could point you in the, the right direction you know, to kind of set you on the path to discovering your, your African history and, and building a foundation to work off from. So I would highly recommend if you have not seen the hidden color series. So there are four installments right now. Um, and also a documentary on the history of Haiti, the Haitian revolution called 1804. So those five DVDs probably would be your best starting point. Uh, and the final installment to the Hidden Colors series, Hidden Colors 5, uh, should be coming out later on this year in summertime. Uh, so more, you know, I'll be sure to kind of let you know about that when the details become available. But that's something you want to look into because it, it lays it out for you. Uh, it gives you visual evidence. You know, you have brilliant scholars that can, you know, expand upon certain information, lead you in the, uh, the right direction of certain books. So, you know, from my standpoint, personally, there was a, it was a series that really put me on the right path because before that I didn't know not even a quarter of what that information, you know, kind of laid out. So, I urge anyone, if you have not seen this series, please do yourself a favor and go pick those up by legal means. You know, I don't want to hear the, I ain't got no money, blah, blah, all the bullshit that we come up with. Black folk, let's, let's just be honest. We will find some money for some bullshit, but some shit that can actually help us or something that's constructive we come with all kind of excuses and sob stories. We really need to come off that. It's way past time for that. So I urge you to pick these up by legal means to make sure that we, you know, keep the, the economy within our communities. You know, we, we need to build those up. We don't need to find ways of scamming and scheming people that are trying to you know, empower themselves economically. So to kind of close out this idea of the shift of Black History Month disappearing, if you will, it's now being called what I what I like to call it Black History Month. OK, we can't wait on the dominant society to tell us about ourselves. We have to want to seek it out. If you don't know where to seek it out, then you need to start asking questions. You need to get with, you know, brothers and sisters out there that can point you in the right direction. And hopefully for the young folks I'm talking, you know, hopefully I could be one of those people that, you know, you can reach out to and say, hey, Ice, you know, where, what's a good starting point for me? Because that's the only way you're going to know. If you don't seek it out, you're not going to get it. And then a generation from now, your kids or your kids' kids are going to start falling into these pitfalls that are being laid out right now because they're thinking a generation or two down the line. So if we don't get this together now, 
get, you know, recapturing our history, we're going to lose it forever. So just my two cents. All right. So moving right along, we're going to get into the melanin minute. And this week a story out of NYC, New York City. Uh, it has been determined that it is now illegal to discriminate against people due to their hairstyles. So when you think of that, you automatically think black people, even though, you know, if you read some of the, the, the articles and stuff that are out there on this, they kind of, you know, spread this idea that this did not, this included everybody. This wasn't just black people. This was everybody. But when you think of hairstyles, you're not thinking of, I mean, outside of some sort of, you know, bright pink or, you know, some sort of drastic hair color. You're not really think of any other groups of people but black people, because when it comes to hair, our hair is, you know, a phenomenon, whether it be male or female, you know, mostly female. But, you know, you do have some brothers who you know, rock cornrows and uh, dreads and stuff like that. But this one mainly targeted black females. Even natural hair was looked at as unprofessional, right? So I guess part of the reason why this change came into place, uh, and, you know, this always shocks me. Well, really it doesn't, but... um, when they when they talk about the idea that quote there's a certain standard for beauty or professionalism you know that involves uh, it being uh, eurocentric you know really like who didn't know this shit it's always non-black folk it's always somebody in the dominant society that's you know just flabbering I I didn't know no, no one ever told me. Like, really? Black folk are just going in here, you know, going to work with their hair, especially sisters, you know, not wanting to put certain chemicals in their hair, relaxers or whatever, and they'll catch flack for that. It, it, it your, your hair isn't, isn't fit for the workplace. What? It grows naturally. This is how it is in its natural state. So the fact that, you know, shout out to, you know, at least someplace saying, hey, it's wrong to discriminate against folks just because of hairstyle. But you got to think over the years, how many brothers and sisters have been, you know, gotten in trouble because they wanted to wear a certain hairstyle and they're told it wasn't professional which inherently is kind of telling them that something's wrong with you. No. So we need to, I, you know, I agree. We need to get rid of the self-hate. We need to get rid of these certain measures that, you know, we hear about. You know, for example, uh, back a couple months ago when that referee cut that young uh, black high school player, I, I believe he was a wrestler, Uh, out in New Jersey he was forced to cut his dreadlocks for what if it was somebody white you wouldn't do that but our hair is looked at as you know something's wrong with them something's wrong what's wrong with them why does their hair look like that you know and, and, and women black women have it hard when it comes to hair you'll hear suspected white supremacists all I've I've seen it you know, oh my God, can I touch your hair? Like we're some sort of pets or something. And you, you really got to look out for that. If you ever hear someone in a dominant society asking, can they touch someone's hair? What the fuck is that shit about? So that's something you want to keep in the back of your mind. Like, hmm, all right, Susie. I'm going to kind of put that in my memory bank. I might have to suspect you of being a white supremacist. Well, while we're on the subject of hair, uh, I want to shift 
to this week in white supremacy. Uh, it seems like it's going to be this hour in white supremacy. So much stuff has happened this week. Oh my goodness. Uh, first, I want to talk about this one story, and I'm going to play this clip here in a second about an 11 year old black student that was attacked by a suspected white supremacist uh, who worked for the school uh, ended up ripping out three of her braids so we we're just talking about hair right so i'm gonna play this clip real quick and we're gonna come back and talk about this Thank you for joining us tonight. Madison Metropolitan School District put one of their teachers on leave after video shows him shoving a student to the ground. Our Amy Reed spoke with the mother of that student today and she joins us now to share what their family is going through. Amy? This mom is upset. She's tired and she's worried for her daughter. She said this experience has been traumatic for her little girl, so much so that she hasn't been able to go back to school since it happened last Wednesday. And to make matters worse, she believes this teacher, who serves as a positive behavior support coach in the district, should have known better. When a parent sends their kids to school, they hope for safety. Makia Price is no different. I don't know. I'm just... The whole experience is just traumatic and devastating and just confusing and I'm just super disgusted at the, the whole incident that, you know, I sent my kid to school to learn and that's a place of, where a mother sent their kid to be comfortable in. I just feel violated in so many ways, me and my daughter, that this even happened to her. Last week, Makia got a phone call from her daughter saying she'd been jumped by her teacher. When she got to the school, her daughter was crying and holding three braids she said had been ripped from her head. Her daughter said this started after her and another classmate sprayed too much perfume in class. What happens next, we don't know for sure. But surveillance video from the hall outside class shows what happens later. And though we can't see it until the investigation is over, Makia did. And she called her pastor, Marcus Allen, to watch it with her. I like a tall man, um, an 11 year old girl um, being pushed from one out of the classroom to the other side of the hallway and then falling on top of her is a very disturbing sight to see. Madison Metropolitan School District has put the teacher, Rob Muller Owens, on leave and said he will not return to Whitehorse Middle. In a statement, they said in part, as a district, we take any situation of this nature very seriously. All of our students need to be safe and supported in school, and we have a thorough investigation process and protocol that we follow. Muller Owens, who was acting principal that day, works for the district as a positive behavior support coach, even traveling to the White House with the superintendent to become an expert on restorative discipline practices. To Makia, a substitute teacher in the district, that just makes it worse. That's the devastating part about it. That's the most disgusting part about it. To have that much education and to have that much training and that much knowledge and to be certified with kids and, and, and not follow protocol. I think that's the, that's the part that hurt me the most and disappoint me the most. The key piece to Makia, her allies, the school district, and police is what happened inside that classroom. Currently, police are still working on figuring it out. Amy Reed reporting tonight. Amy, thank you. All right, so, and I'm not really surprised, a 52-year-old suspected white supremacist male, and yes, he is Caucasian. I looked it up. I... I didn't want to just make that broad assumption that, okay, you know, someone that was not white happened to do this. I looked him up and saw his profile and he looks like, you know, a classic Nazi type, ball head, you know, all that shit. So you, you're going to attack an 11 year old little girl. Yank out her braids at that. And you think that's going to be okay. But, you know, the thing with him, he, he's probably going to get, you know, let go. He's not going to get fired. They're going to find a soft way of phrasing it. And I, I really hope the mom gets on it. I don't want to hear all this forgiveness shit. I want to see them do some sort of, you know, civil suit something because I don't think he's going to get charged at all this you know when they say you know police are you know investigating that that just means they're they're coming up with an excuse 
to, you know, not charge this dude. You know, like, okay, how can we spin this? Um, let's, let's just say, uh, uh, he, you know, he felt threatened. You know, you can't feel threatened by an 11 year old little girl. Unless you're just a punk, which obviously he is, you know, looking at a soft target to, to try to attack. And the mom, she's, you know, on this bullshit, like, oh, you know, as an educator, you know, how, how, how could you not know how to deal with the situation and all this shit that she was talking? I'm like, mom, what are you talking about? This guy is a suspected white supremacist. He believes in harming and mistreating people based upon race. He don't give a shit that she's a little girl to, to him. She's a fucking threat and she needs to be neutralized, you know? So he did what he was going to do. He let it be known. And, you know, as a result, he's not going to have a job for a little bit because he's going to find work. He's going to be working at another school. I bet you I'm willing to bet any amount of money. So, uh, hopefully, like I said, the mom gets on, you know, gets on code, hire a lawyer, sue the damn school, sue him, do what you got to do. Um, hopefully that little girl's all right. Uh, it's just a, a, an unfortunate situation to see. So next story I was going to touch on, I'm not even really going to give this too much energy, but... Uh, I was going to talk about Roseanne Barr's suspected white supremacist ass calling uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez a, quote, very common, loving, bug-eyed bitch. And <laughs> this is funny to me because Roseanne is the last person in the world to comment on how someone looks. Okay, Roseanne, you're probably like 50 years old. You look like 80. You, you, you weren't really the the best looking in your prime so you're really not in a position to be calling anybody kind of names as far as um on their appearance so it's just not even worth talking about she went full white supremacist you know with her with her rant they, that's how she ended up getting quote kicked off her show and i do say quote because she was compensated fairly well you know it, it was more of a, a pr you know, stunt to just kind of get her out of the limelight, but she got her she got her paper out of that. Don't don't think she walked away empty-handed. So they they looked out for her, her fellow white supremacists. So fuck Roseanne. Let's move on. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next story. Uh, this involves a South Carolina school that had their children, students that went out on a field trip, went out to pick cotton and sung Negro slave songs as a quote unquote game. So I'm going to play this clip uh, that kind of talks about the situation. You'll hear from some of the administrators and the suspected white supremacists that halted the uh, interview when they, you know, kind of made mention of slavery. And we'll come back and talk about this. South Carolina fifth graders told to sing while picking cotton in a field. I'm livid right now. In the middle of Black History Month. I'm African American and my ancestors pick cotton. Why would I want my son to pick cotton? and think it's fun. This cell phone video shot by a teacher was sent to parents okay. and brought this mom to tears. I think it's making a mockery. A mockery of what? A mockery of slavery, a mockery of what our people went through. Jessica Blanchard's 10 year old son Jamari says he didn't understand what he was singing, nor did teachers explain how cotton fields were harvested by African-American slaves. Did they talk about this how slaves used to pick cotton? 
No. A permission slip sent to parents does mention picking cotton as part of a history lesson, not on slavery, but the Great Depression. For 15 years, Rock Hill fifth graders have been coming to the Carroll School, which was built in 1929 by and for African Americans. It now serves as a teaching center for African American history during the Great Depression and is run by Rock Hill Schools. The district calls this, quote, a unique learning opportunity that promotes understanding about our past and helps students make real life connections. They thought it was funny. Jamari says picking cotton was part of a game. He thought it was fun. It was a contest. Whoever picked the least amount of cotton had to hold a big sack called Big Mama. There is no race. The kids go out there and they pick and this, the, the Big Mama comes and it's just a, you know, it just, it's humor. 81-year-old Wally Cathcart is an instructor here at the Carroll School where he was also a student in 1943. The son of sharecroppers, this former cotton farmer now shows kids what he and his parents had to do to survive. We need innovation in the educational system, not just lecturing children, seeing them up in a classroom. School officials say they correct children if they mention slavery, saying this is about the Great Depression. Cathcart calls the lesson living history. What do you say to people who find this offensive and say that this trivializes slavery? I certainly love to answer that question because I deal with this issue all the time. One of the problems when it comes to African American people is that they fail to understand history in its proper context and because of that we are we're at a disadvantage today. I asked why they skip over the history of slaves being forced to pick cotton. That's when district spokesman Michael Frost stopped the interview. I don't think they should have anyone picking cotton. As for Blanchard and her son, both support the Carroll School and its mission, but say this history lesson goes too far. I think it's misguided and maybe ignorance on their part. In Rock Hill, South Carolina, Matt Grant, Fox 46, Charlotte. All right, y'all, we back. So did you hear the bullshit? I, I just want to make sure y'all heard the same bullshit that I heard. Because I heard quite a few bullshit uh, talking points in this so, you know, you got the, the old coons talking about, I, I correct them when they, when they talk about Larry. I said, no, no, no. This is the, the, the Great Depression. Who in the entire fuck thinks of the Great Depression? Who, is that the first thing that comes into your mind when you're thinking about picking cotton and sling, singing slave songs? No, you're thinking about slavery you're not thinking about no damn great depression so they tried to, to twist the narrative and, and i hope you see why today's episode is entitled from black history month to lack history month i i, I really hope you're starting to kind of piece it together you see where i'm going with this so you know it, this is just a bunch of bullshit and i'm trying to figure out why the mom is so surprised that she didn't know her kid was going on this this field trip because I'm pretty sure they made mention of something about this in the in the the permission slips or whatever they sent out you know I don't know what the exact verbiage of you know, the the slips were and I could I'm pretty sure it, they didn't say a damn thing about slavery they probably tried to spin it you know we'll be doing field exercises yeah field literally field exercises so mom get shit together <laughs> that, that's all i got to say and the old coons you know we can't listen to these old coons talking about did they even what about slavery no and you're trying to correct you know the kids when they make mention of it or you know, say, hey, are you sure this had nothing to do with slavery? You know, shout out to those young brothers and sisters that are picking up on stuff. You know, don't don't let some of these old coons out here mislead you. You know what it is. Go with your gut. This don't seem like no shit that you need to be learning about in the month of February. Then chances are you probably shouldn't be doing this shit. So shame on that school. Shame on anybody involved and shame on those old coons for, you know, going along with the program and the suspected white supremacists who, you know, kind of halted the interview 
So just just watch out, man. Make sure your kids are you know, learning about themselves for real. And we keep going with this recurring theme because I don't know if y'all heard about the it was a school in Virginia. Uh, the principal sent out a public apology uh, because the students were conducting a, a field exercise, uh, learning about the Underground Railroad. They're slipping in that y'all ain't shit. We we want you to think y'all ain't shit. Cause we doing this shit in the month of February. We're not teaching you about all the the great accomplishments that happened in spite of slavery. You know all the the slave revolutions. You don't hear about that shit. You don't hear about all the event inventors that you know made all these great accomplishments and achievements, and they were stolen right from out. You know right from under their hands. We don't hear about this type of stuff. We don't hear about the perseverance after the enslaved Africans, you know, kind of got their freedom and were, were trying to make a, a way for themselves. We don't hear about this stuff. We hear about, oh, we, we want y'all to pick cotton as exercise. Oh, we want y'all to run around like slaves being scared. Come on, come on, young people. No. No. We're we not going for that bullshit no more. It's a new day. We, we know what it is. If you're listening to this and you're enjoying this content, chances are you're you're of the same mindset. You done with the bullshit. So Black History Month, no more. All right, guys, I got a couple more stories I want to go through uh, when we're talking about the system of white supremacy. So another story that I'm going to talk about right now uh, happened uh, probably about a week or so ago. Uh, This suspected white supremacist female uh, found herself in someone else's business. You had a a black family out there taking pictures with their one year old daughter. Um, And then this suspected white supremacist female comes in and, you know, just tries to interrupt things and oh you're not supposed to be taking pictures here and starts messing with their property and and all this so I'm going to play this clip for y'all real quick and we're going to talk about this shit here in a second too alright a toddler's happy day dissolves into chaos you're making my child cry keep doing it this woman a millionaireess confronts the little girl's parents who were taking photos on her first birthday the woman was upset that a blanket and birthday balloons were set up on the brick walkway. Shame on you! As the toddler's mom shouts at the woman, she goes after the dad. She is crazy. You're crazy. Absolutely crazy. She then picks up her Pomeranian dog and strikes again. Look, look. It happened at this scenic park in a ritzy neighborhood of Houston that is a popular location for wedding and family photos. So who's the lady in question? Her name is Francie Neely, and she turns out to be a well-known socialite, the ex-wife of the owner of the Houston Astros baseball team. When they divorced in 2015, she reportedly got $30 million. Neely can be seen dragging the child's blanket off the walkway. She then headed back to her Jaguar convertible parked on the street. Shame on you, you racist. This is a photo of baby Anya that was taken right before the nasty confrontation. Her parents, Isaiah and Kellen Allen, still can't believe how their perfect day became a nightmare. The incident is reminding many of other over-the-top racially charged confrontations involving people going about their business. Remember Barbecue Becky? Permit Patty, Pool Patrol Paul, Hallway Harry. What's it doing? The Houston socialite is now apologizing. I am very sorry that I got upset, she says in a statement. It's hard to remain composed when confronted by shouted threats of lawsuits and false inflammatory accusations. You're making my child cry! Yep, she tried to play victim at the end, didn't she? So, Miss Francie Neely, I'm suspecting you of being a white supremacist. Because 
you had no reason of confronting this family. They're out there minding their own business, taking pictures with their daughter, one-year-old daughter, you know, someone that's helpless. They can't defend themselves. You come up and are just so irate the fact that they're taking pictures. What are those niggers doing over there? I can't believe it. You're getting yourself all worked up about nothing ain't got shit to do with you. So you find yourself over there. You're touching other people's property, mind you. And, you know, they're, they're, the family's like, look, you need to move. I'm trying to back you up off me. And then for some reason, you want to come and go into the dad's face and actually strike the dad. At this point, it's a matter of self-defense. You know, when it comes to these racial suspects, don't don't think, oh, she's a she's a female. She's a lady. No, if you're suspected white supremacist, I'm suspending all that shit. You you have put your hands on me. You've endangered my child's well-being and safety. I have a right to defend her safety, my family's safety, and best believe my own safety. So I don't want to hear any of this. Oh, well, you know, the, the, the dad, he, he did good by not uh, re- retaliating. Shit. Self-defense. I'm not saying he's supposed to strike anybody. But in this case, if a suspected white supremacist comes at me, I'm going to, hey, I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to defend my family. So, I, hey, that brother is better than I was because if I was in that situation, she she would have something to you'd be complaining about for real. You know, she tried to spin it at the end too. I don't know if y'all kind of caught that. She tried to try to pull that old oh I I, I was just uh, I, I was being intimidated and uh, all this dumb shit I'm like you're the one who start fucking with them oh threats of lawsuits damn right they need to sue your ass and you're a millionaire too so you already probably thinking oh these lowly niggers what, what are they doing around here no Hey, family? Family? Uh, I'm talking to y'all. I, I need y'all to sue. I, I need you. I need y'all to get whatever paper y'all got together. Y'all need to sue her because she had no right of messing with y'all. She had no right to run up and touch your property, endanger the life of your daughter. No. So. Don't don't play this kumbaya shit, people. I, I'm I'm not for that shit. So, Miss Francie Neely, sue her ass. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say on this shit. We'll see. We'll see if there's any developments. Uh, I hope to hear some developments on this one because this that really bothered me. All right, the last story I'm gonna touch on today involves a little seven year old white supremacist boy in training Uh, he managed to raise over five thousand i didn't say five dollars i didn't say 50 i didn't even say 500 he managed to raise over five thousand dollars for a border wall by selling hot chocolate so i'm going to play a little clip uh for you real quick it kind of involves some of the backlash he's received justifiably um, and we'll, we'll kind of discuss some of you know what's been said uh, his parents actually speak in this clip as well and we'll get to it here in a second well he's only seven years old but that is not stopping people from attacking an Austin boy online yeah yesterday we told you about how he's raising money for the border wall with a hot chocolate stand well today his family is dealing with the backlash some people are mad and calling me a little Hitler and stuff. If he's going to do it, he needs to learn that there's going to be a little backlash, but I just wish they'd do it in a more respectful, kind of adult-type manner. 
Now, his parents say he came up with the idea on his own after watching President Trump's State of the Union address. They say that they knew reaction would be mixed. They say they are proud of their son and the negative comments are not stopping him. They should be kids. I just happen to have a very mature seven-year-old who wants to be involved in this. That's what he wants to do. We're either going to mail it to, to Donald Trump or we're going to go there and give it to him. Now, he also has his supporters. He has collected more than $6,000 selling his hot chocolate. All right, y'all. Uh, well, my bad. It wasn't 5000 It totaled and jumped up a little bit to 6000 So what does that tell you? You know, we, we want to live in this make-believe world that racists don't exist, that you know, after the civil rights movement, they just kind of went away and became extinct. No, they, they've been living amongst us, hiding in plain sight this whole time. So a couple of things that I notice, you know, and before I even get into it, let me say this. A seven year old boy, you know, even though he is, you know, kind of letting be known that he's starting to develop uh, these white supremacist views. Best course of action to name call him, eh, that's probably not the best way of going about it. You know, speaking truth to power, that's that's different. But call him little Hitler, I don't I don't subscribe to that. Not a seven year old. He's really kind of going off of what I believe what his parents are or, you know, kind of ingraining in it. And if it's not his parents, it's definitely someone that he's around, you know, maybe family-wise, maybe grandparents, aunts, uncles. So he, he's picking this up from somewhere. He wasn't just watching the State of the Union one day and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build, you know, I'm gonna do my part to help this wall get built. Well, now that being said, let's get into the parents' comments. The mom saying, oh, he's very mature. It's almost like she's kind of low-key encouraging, the, the, you know, what he's doing. She's, she's low-key in her own way saying, you know, well, he he's just very mature for his age. And... The, the dad the dad's talking out two sides of his goddamn mouth one second he's talking about he doesn't know where he picked this up from I, I, I have no idea way to go dad you throwing your own seven year old son under the bus knowing damn well he got that rhetoric from you and your damn wife you know let, let's just call it what it is but he, he, he's trying to play the I, I, I don't know you know, that whole, I, I, I don't know anything. White supremacists, they claim to know everything. But then when you confront them on certain shit, they know no. I, I don't, I have no clue. But at the end of the day, guess what he said? I stand by my son. I support what he's doing. So you're supporting what he's doing, but yet you have no idea. You didn't speak out. And, mind you, neither one of them spoke out and said, I don't, you know, condone this behavior. I don't, I don't know where he picked this up from. Neither one of them said that shit. You know, I hope y'all really picked up on that. The fact that neither one of them said, you know what? I'm, I, I don't condone this. I don't teach this. I'm, I'm really would like to know where he got this, this, this line of thinking from. Neither one of them said that shit. They just played the whole, you know, dumb as a fox routine. So let's talk about $6,000 worth of hot chocolate. That's a lot of goddamn hot chocolate. And according to this article that I read about this situation in the uh, New York Daily News, he was selling $2 worth of hot chocolate where you could get an additional 50 cents for marshmallows. So that's two up to $2.50 for hot for one cup of hot chocolate. In 
than six thousand dollars worth it was a lot of hot chocolate being bought so there's a lot of white supremacists pitching in oh this little boy is doing his part to making america great again well honey let's let's buy some hot chocolate so you know it, it's it's sickening to know that seven-year-olds are getting indoctrinated with you know this this ideology and don't don't let any of that get lost on you don't let the parents bullshit escape you either they know full and goddamn well where their seven-year-old son got that ideology from all right guys this wraps up today's episode of the passion of ice podcast again if you enjoyed this content please 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 and i know a lot of you out there have been doing this but please continue to do so please share it uh please urge those that are listening and enjoy the content to like you know on their their favorite uh, streaming platform of choice subscribe let me know how you feel about this and if you have any thoughts on uh, topics that you'd like me to cover you know here in the near future please let me know that as well Um, i've heard some feedback from some of the young folks out there uh, wanting me to cover a couple of things Uh, i'm gonna try to incorporate that stuff real soon so especially the younger folks out there if y'all if y'all want me to cover some things man i'm i'm not opposed to it but you gotta let me know all right so with that being said You know, ice them or everything on social media, all that good stuff. All right. Y'all have a good day. Peace.